one hundred greatest sci-fi movies, man. Um, as directed by me, <laughs> your boy Seat. Uh, most of the things here on the Pop Riga Network, man. We're talking about what I think are the hundred greatest science fiction movies. We're doing them one a day for the first one hundred days of two thousand and twenty-two. We're ranking them from 100 to 1, man. So hopefully you will join us on this journey. Journey. If this is the first one of these you heard, man, you got in on the ground floor. You're still in the 90s, man. So you can just go back, listen to uh, 100 through 96, and then today. Today, we're giving you number 95. But if you recall, number 96 was Wally. If you haven't watched Wally in a while, I suggest you go back and do so. Huddle up with the kids. If you don't have kids, curl your hands around some booze over there. Go ahead and enjoy Wally today. You might need a little bit more booze for <laughs> today. Number 95 is Star Trek Into Darkness. Star Trek Into Darkness. Uh, a 2013 flick directed by your boy Yay Yay Abrams, man. Earth will fall. When the crew of the Enterprise is called back home, they find an unstoppable force of terror from within their own organization that has detonated the fleet and everything it stands for, leaving our world in a state of crisis. With a personal score to settle, Captain Kirk leads a manhunt to a war zone world to capture one a one man weapon of mass destruction. As our heroes are propelled into an epic chess game of life and death, love will be challenged, friendships will be torn apart, and sacrifices must be made for the only family Kirk has left his crew. Let me tell you something. That synopsis is more exciting than this actual movie is. Uh, listen, let me get a, a sip of water for this. Star Trek Into Darkness. We didn't know what to get. We didn't know what we were going to expect. We kind of knew what we were going to expect, right? Like, as soon as that first, as soon as the credits rolled on 2009 Star Trek, everyone's like, so they're going to do Khan next, right? And then J.J. with his mystery box bullshit tried to be like, nah, we're not, we're not going to do Khan, man. we got this guy John Harrison coming in. Benedict Cumberbatch is going to play a new type of villain. Ah, you, it's nothing you've seen before. And, of course, it was bullshit. We knew it was bullshit going into it. And then we said, you know, my, my real name is Khan. And everyone in the theater is like, yeah, we know. <laughs> but uh, you know, this is this is not your granddaddy's Rat the Con, right? This is this is something new, a little bit different, man. It's recontextualized for this new generation. And these Star Trek movies of this new generation, starting with JJ Abrams' two thousand nine Star Trek, has been more about the adventure of 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 space exploration and less about the actual exploration and the science of and that has turned off a lot of hardcore Star Trek people. They came for diplomacy and space exploration and the philosophies regarding intersecting cultures and how we can all work together to create better societies. That's that's kind of like the, the, the foundation that Star Trek is built on. But J.J. is like, how about I just tell a couple of dope, fun stories? And that turned a lot of people off. And that's what this is. This is one of those, let's just tell a dope, fun story. Um, the The... And that's kind of what it rides on. Like the positives of this movie are it's just a fun ride. Like there's very little breathing time. It's set piece to set piece to set piece to set piece. You got a little bit of squabbling and bickering with Kirk and Spock. You open on this great opening action scene with uh with you know Kirk violating Prime Directive and helping out a uh you know helping out a planet because it's the right thing to do. And that of course that is JJ just needed a reason to have that epic shot of the Enterprise coming up out of the clouds or coming up out of the planet core, wherever they're coming up out of. And, you know, all that good shit going on. Uh, and it's, it's you know, the, the the play in in the relationship between Kirk and Spock is kind of like the uh, one of the themes that's going throughout this joint. The bad guy being from within, that was kind of kind of thematic with the times that we were in. We know we were in the area of WikiLeaks and all that kind of stuff, and people were like, maybe your administration, you know, they're not the most trustworthy people, and all that kind of, they, they kind of tapped into that vein, right? And that's and that's how you get Peter Weller, who we'll be talking about again shortly, uh, that's coming up through this. As well as, you know, Chris Pine is Kirk, Zachary Quinto, Zoe Saldana, Carl Urban, Simon Pegg, John Cho, Anton Yelton, rest in peace! Uh, Bruce Greenwood coming back to play Captain Pike, man. Alice Eve as Carol Marcus. The reason why this movie is so low, despite how fun it is, is 
JJ is like, here's characters. Hey, you remember Carol Marcus, right? Huh? But there's no real contextualization for these characters. Like, you know, Kirk is Spock's relationship, so we're going to flip that sacrifice. It's going to tug at your heartstrings. Well, no, it's not going to tug at our heartstrings because you haven't fully developed. When Wrath of Khan hit in 82, was Star Trek was what, like 60, 66 or something like that? Like, we'd had like a decade and some change, almost two decades, of Shatner and Nimoy, Spock, and McCoy to build on to that sacrifice in Wrath of Khan. It made sense. Like, man, this dude's they've been they've been buddies for years, right? This this is this hurts us, the audience. Whereas in Star Trek in the Darkness, when they flip that and Kirk sacrifices himself, you know, for for the ship and Spock is right there, like, well, we've known these dudes for one movie, a matter of hours, not the time that the original series people had. And it was him trying to use lazy narrative shorthand of nostalgia to try to pull on those heartstrings of, well, everyone knows about the relationship between Kirk and Spock. We don't need to really develop or establish it. And that's not the case. Same with Carol Marcus, right? Like, oh, hey, Carol Marcus is going to pop before a couple of scenes and because you know her from Star Trek, the Rathacon. But that's not the that's not our Carol Marcus that we know. And they didn't really do a, a whole lot to establish her either. A lot of lazy shorthand was happening in this movie some dope fight scenes great action all throughout this the Klingons were dope to see because the Klingons look different every single time you see them depending on who's your 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 makeup and costume designer but you know for all of its all of its pluses the flaws are just a little bit more glaring but in the coming batch was the great villain he could have been anything other than Khan but that's the route they chose to go we get our decent sacrifice. And, of course, we see the setup a million miles away when you got McCoy dealing with the Tribbles and he's seeing what Khan's blood can do. And then I was like, okay, well, whoever's going to do the sacrifice, we, we already know the way out of it. So telegraph that way too easy instead of just making a whole Star Trek three about it. At the end of the search for Kirk. <laughs> but still, man, it's a fun movie. It's just not a great sci-fi movie, but it is a fun movie. And it's always worth sitting down and rewatching. I've checked out this movie many and many a times. I love In the Darkness as a fun action movie, but not as a great sci-fi movie. So that is it for number 95 on this list. Star Trek In the Darkness, man. We'll be back 24 hours from now with our number 94. And we're going to keep this train right on rolling for the first 100 days of 2022. So keep on rolling with me. Like I said, we'll be back tomorrow. And so then you all take it easy and have a good one.